Hey everyone, welcome to Crypto TV. Today's guest is Reese Merrick, Managing Director of the Middle East and Africa at Ripple, the payments industry leader behind the XRP token. Reese leads the company's business operations and strategic initiatives from Ripple's headquarters in Dubai. Some background on Reese before we get started. Reese has been working at Ripple for six years, but he first managed relationships with Ripple's key partners, financial institutions, and crypto partners to enable cross-border payments in both Dubai and London. So if you're curious to hear what Ripple's plans for the Middle East region are for the rest of the year, then stay tuned for this interview. Reese, welcome to Crypto TV. Pleasure to have you on. How are you doing? Really good. Great to be here. Thank you, Ornella. Yeah, so we recently caught up in person at the Crypto Expo in Dubai, and we did a fireside chat where I asked you all about what's going on at Ripple, but I also wanted to have you here on the show to keep asking a little further about Ripple and its plans, especially in the Middle East. So first off, Reese, just want to Get your views on how it's been so far at these, all of these recent events that Dubai has hosted from Token 2049 to Crypto Expo where we met up. Do you have any favorites, any, any takeaways from all of these conferences and expos? So Ripple have been over the last few, uh, few weeks very busy uh, with the events that have taken place. We had uh, Token 2049, as you uh, mentioned, that was nearly a washout, but we managed to get there in the end. We had Dubai FinTech Summit as well, which was an awesome event, kind of more bridging traditional finance with decentralized finance and some great and very uh, thoughtful conversations we had there. And of course, you and I were on a, a fireside um, discussion today at Crypto uh, Expo. So lots going on, lots of good conversations. I think what I my takeaways for these events have been there's a huge amount of international interest coming to the region. So a lot of people traveling in and that's either to do business in the region or to set up operations and really kind of have, um, you know, a footprint here. So I was really kind of thrilled with that, that level of international engagement and think that business is going to be good off the back of it. Yeah, definitely. I feel that as well, especially with all of the people that, that flew in for, for that blockchain week where we had like I want to say it was like over 200 events plus the storm like that did not stop people from trying to attend expos or parties or meetups it was like it was the craziest time i think i had ever seen in dubai so that's that's a positive thing um but definitely it means that there's a lot going on so uh, that makes me question what's going on specifically at ripple when it comes to the region you said that there's a lot of interest specifically in in dubai and the gcc gulf region so why do you think that is and what are ripple's plans for the the near future or rest of the year in the region so ripple have been in the region for approximately four years now uh, set up shop in the difc um and really what the uae and dubai specifically kind of you know, offers is forward thinking regulation, you know, a big network and and really becoming the global financial sector for not only fintech, which is obviously a big part of what we focus on around payments, but also crypto um, and blockchain kind of adoption. And really, if you think the way the regulators are kind of leaning in, they're putting in frameworks in place that are attractive for global businesses and crypto natives to set up shop here and really kind of build out their operations. That's where we're seeing a lot of growth from a ripple uh, viewpoint. You know, rest of the year continues to remain like the last four. We're looking to continue and expand our customer base across our payments product. Um, so ensuring that customers can, you know, use crypto XRP um, and the XRP ledger to really kind of make things a lot more efficient when they're moving funds cross border. But as I mentioned earlier in our discussion, we're also focusing very heavily on the custody side of things. So we have a custody infrastructure products that we acquired last year from a company called Metico. And really we're seeing a lot of interest in the region where large FIs, institutional customers are really looking to take a step into tokenization of real world assets and they need a safe, secure place to store those assets. Yeah, definitely lots of products, including a new 
stable coin offering. So I'm curious as to where that target market is, because I don't think there's too much stable coin activity in this region. So curious as to where the Ripple uh, stable coin is targeting. So Ripple, yeah, obviously announced that we are going to be launching our own stable coin. I think this was a an obvious step for for Ripple. You know, the market currently is, sits at about $150 billion. Um, I think it's forecasted to reach 2.8, 3 trillion by 2028. So clearly there's firstly huge demand for um, a compliance first, regulatory kind of adapt business to kind of enter the space. I would also say that where we've seen kind of feedback from customers within stable coins is having a US dollar backed stable coin. 60% of global trade or global transactions are actually US dollar settled and not all of them are actually settled in the US. I think if you look at the Middle East and the GCC region, a number of uh, countries here are actually pegged to the USD. So we believe that there's definitely um, a need for a US dollar backed stable coin to really enhance kind of cross border settlement, not only across this region, but more broadly, more, more globally. Okay, and what's the the unique selling point of the Ripple stablecoin compared to that of USDC, Circle, or USDT, Tether? I would say that Ripple have spent 12 years in building out a payment cross-border payment offering. We have the infrastructure. The, uh, the uh, stablecoin was the next evolution of that. So it actually gives our customers optionality into how they want to receive, whether it's fiat, whether it's stablecoin, um, so really, we feel like we've got the infrastructure. This is just an additional kind of layer to that to, to kind of build off. Yeah, and there definitely is a need, like you said, especially in countries where the inflation rates are just wild. Like people, some people really depend on on these these stable coins and a more stable <laughs> currency for their daily lives. So, do you think that that means that maybe crypto or utility and, and these real world use cases are finally at the forefront of the crypto industry? Like, is crypto finally maturing a bit now after all these years? I think so. I think ultimately it will come down to regulation and what the regulators, the frameworks they deem in terms of how stable coins will be circulated. I think Mika in Europe, end of this year, we're going to see kind of the whole European Union have a clear framework in kind of how that circulation does. And the UAE and the broader Middle East will continue to kind of follow that suit. I would say you're totally right. Currencies that are, you know, devalued significantly, you know, the locals and the people there don't want to hold that. They want to hold a US dollar backed um, stable coin just because it's a store of value for them as well. Um, you know, they're not going to be as impacted in volatility in their own currency versus kind of the US uh, de uh, stable coin there. So, yes, I think that's a, a valid point. And that reminds me, um, the Ripple CEO, Brad Garlinghouse, he recently estimated that the size of the crypto market could double double in size by the end of this year. So how do you think that this particular region of, of the Middle East and the GCC region might contribute to that growth? I know you, you mentioned before a lot of it has to do with companies coming here, but is it also because of the regulatory clarity or just because of, you know, is, is there even local talent? Like, what do you think specifically might lead to the general growth of the industry? The UAE has is, is done a remarkable job in demonstrating um, how to progress within, you know, crypto and blockchain space. And, and really that does come down to initially regulation. I think the ADGM, VARA, DMC, uh, DMCC and also DFSA have very clearly laid out frameworks that allow businesses to enter, that allow businesses to start up and to flourish and innovate. I think that if you look at the UAE, I think there's something like 2000 plus organizations here within the blockchain and crypto space. I mean, that's phenomenal. I think there's 10,000 individuals working for or representing companies based in this region as well. And I think we'll definitely continue to see that grow. So I think we need more of the same more broadly across across the globe. But I think the UA is certainly, you know, becoming, if not already, the, the global hub for crypto and blockchain. Yeah, definitely. I agree with you. It's, it's getting there. Some people even say that it might be the next Silicon Valley. Do you agree? <laughs> I think so. Definitely <laughs> heading 
Okay, definitely. All right, well, Reese, uh, can you just tell our audience what the best way is to contact you if they would like to reach out to you and to learn more about Ripple's offerings, please? Absolutely. Probably best way, LinkedIn. So, Reese Merrick, please, uh, please drop me a connection request. My inbox is open and, yeah, happy to, to speak to as many as you as possible. Okay, amazing. And one last thing. I remember on stage you gave me a book recommendation. Do you mind telling our audience again which one that is? So my, the book that I kind of almost listened to kind of on repeat throughout the year is called The Daily Stoic by Ryan Holiday. And essentially, um, it's all about the philosophy of stoicism. And I think where, why that's important to me is that, you know, events will occur in the world where or on a daily basis that you cannot control. And actually, it's how you respond to those um, those events that kind of allows you to kind of move forward and find solutions. So it's something that I kind of live by on my side. Love that. I will definitely be checking out that book. Thank you so much for your time today, Reese. Thank you. Cheers. And everyone, make sure to check out The Daily Stoic if you're interested to reach out to Reese if you'd like to learn more about Ripple and stay tuned for more of Crypto TV. Today in the crypto market, Bitcoin is currently trading at $68,389. Ether's price is at $3,813 today. Bubble is down this week, trading at 007 cents today. And Notcoin is in red today with a 6% price decrease. That was Rhys Merrick from Ripple. Great insights that he gave us about the company's plans for the upcoming future, especially in the Middle East region. So make sure to reach out to him if you have any questions. Check out his book recommendation. I definitely will. And let me know if you have any comments, any questions, and any suggestions as who you want me to interview next. So until next time, I'm Ornella Hernandez with Crypto TV.